When it comes to the best beginner fish in the hobby, I guess you can look no further than my Asian aquarium. However, I think we should first start off with what's been going on with this tank because we actually haven't really done much of an update since the inception of this tank. Originally, we scaped it with some rocks and some uh, manzanita branches on the bottom to replicate roots, and then we had a large stump in the corner. That stump was far more rotted than I had thought, and I had to remove it simply because it was deteriorating the water quality in the aquarium rather rapidly. I guess after I did that, I, I almost lost interest in this aquarium until more recently. You see, I added in a piece of manzanita from the 375. It's just kind of randomly placed in there, and then I took a handful of Anubias and tossed it in there. I thought they'll end up where they want to end up, whether they're going to float or attach themselves to some of the wood or within the substrate or whatever they're going to do, and that's exactly what happened. Now this tank has a much more natural feel to it, especially since I've just left it alone. The bottom is covered in a substrate that I've mixed. It's got some sand, some fine grain sand, and then some multicolored, you know, river gravel that's kind of small in size as well, only anywhere from one to say three millimeters in size. I've also strewn a bunch of leaf litter uh, throughout the aquarium, giving that an even more natural look. And uh, there's some java ferns as well as a little bit of moss here and there. But the bottom of this tank is my absolute favorite. In fact, if I were to base this aquarium compared to every other aquarium in the gallery, the bottom of this tank is my favorite by far. This piece of manzanita I don't like and I never did like, However, I got some really interesting behavior out of the fish once I added it into it, so I decided to leave it in there because they were actually acting so much more natural and in line with how they would in the wild. You see, the stocking in this aquarium is about 50 or maybe it's 75 Harlequin Raspores, an absolute classic in the hobby and is arguably one of the best beginner fish as well, but not the point of today's video. In fact, I wouldn't even rank these guys in my top 10 beginner fish, but I know a lot of other people do. In my opinion, one of the best, if not the best, beginner fish based on my experience and opinion and some information about them is the Garami. All different types of Garami, but in this aquarium, we have the Pearl Garami. I went with Pearl Garami for two big reasons. One is their appearance, two is their availability and cost. Their Availability and cost, you'll find Grammys in almost any local fish store. All different varieties and different species. However, they're also relatively cheap and affordable, anywhere from three to eight dollars each. And for such an amazing looking fish, I think it's definitely worth the price. Of course, those prices are going to fluctuate all over the world. Not everybody has the same prices everywhere. <clears throat> but the Pearl Grammy, I like them the best for their appearance. One, they have that classic uh, oval-shaped body like the Karami should, but their coloration and some of their features is what attracts me to, attracts me to them the most. They get their name, the Pearl Karami, based on these little pearls or these little dots, white dots, that uh, cover their entire body and even some of their fins. However, depending on where they are in the aquarium and how they uh, reflect in the light, those pearls really shimmer and really give them an absolutely amazing, gorgeous look. They even have some blues and reds and blacks, you know, a nice mixture of colors, which makes them really appealing, especially since they're a beginner fish. You're getting a fish that's an absolute stunning looking fish, yet it's also a beginner, which to me is better than a platy or a guppy or some of the other top rated beginner fish, which are nothing wrong with them, but I prefer these guys simply because we get those beginner aspects in an absolutely beautiful fish. So not only is their, is their coloration as well as their, uh, their body or their markings on their body absolutely stunning in my opinion, but a couple of other things that draws my attention to them is that subtle black line that runs from the nape of their head all the way through their eye and down their body. Just a simple little black line. Makes them look a little bit more eloquent looking, a little more delicate. Uh, and I just can't stop staring at them. I'm always staring at these fish. Probably more than anybody in this rack, I look at these guys. Of course, their modified pectoral fins are absolutely fascinating as well, and which really gives them that classic garami look. Without them, I don't know if they'd be, be as appealing to me, but I guess that'd be up to you in personal preferences. These modified pectoral fins serve a purpose. They're highly sensitive feelers. These guys use them 
to feel out and explore the entire aquarium. Sometimes they're feeling the food with them. It's almost like they're tiny little arms that they can't really uh, do much with besides move them around, but they can move them in any direction. I find that they use them to feel each other the most and see who's around them and, and I, I believe they're using to communicate with them. I'm still trying to study Guarami sign language. I'm almost there. I'll translate in a future video. Okay, so they're commonly available. They look great. Uh, they are easy to care for. These guys will, of course, eat any types of food that I offer them. I give them flakes, small pellets, frozen foods. They'll readily accept almost anything that I offer, which is key to survival of fish. You need to make sure they're eating. Some gouramis can be aggressive towards other gouramis or even other fish, so you kind of want to watch out for that. But most importantly, you don't want to put in known fin nippers with gourami because they will eat at those modified pectoral fins or those feelers, or we can call them antennas because it's kind of what they look like. They also withstand a wide range of water parameters as well as temperatures. So this tank runs at about 26 degrees, but they can easily withstand temperatures lower, low as uh, say 24, 23 degrees Celsius, upwards of 28. Uh, pH in this tank is 7.6. They can withstand acidic as well as alkaline pHs, as long as everything is consistent and steady. Don't worry about chasing the ideal numbers, just use and work with what you have. Any success I've ever had in the hobby was due to consistency and simplicity. I never complicate or overcomplicate or look to chase any numbers that I don't necessarily need. I focus on what I can provide the fish and the best of my ability and they tend to do quite well. But when it comes to the gourami, easily the, the most uh, well-known fact about them or at least one of the most interesting things to me is that they are a labyrinth fish. Now what this means, and you might have heard of the word a labyrinth before, which is like a maze, well they have a maze-like structure in behind their eyes, but in front of their gill plate, it's a very tiny structure, but it allows them to go to the surface of the water, gasp a uh, air bubble, and trap it in that labyrinth and absorb that oxygen that way, as opposed to through their gills, which most fish do. Now of course they can go between each one, but what that means is that if water quality is not favorable to the fish, they can still go to the surface and gasp for air. So if your oxygen content is kind of low, which plagues a lot of new beginners, or maybe the tank is kind of sort of cycling, or you've got some ammonia in the water, they can still you know, survive for extended periods by gasping at the surface, uh, allowing them to live even longer than most fish would be able to withstand those things. And another interesting fact about the labyrinth fish, the paradise fish, is a labyrinth fish and that was uh, one of the first if not the first tropical fish ever kept in an aquarium so as you can imagine you know 150 i think it was about 150 maybe 200 years ago probably 150 years ago we didn't have the technology and availability of providing an environment like this however the paradise fish was able to withstand those conditions a lot has to do with being a labyrinth fish so in considering all of this the, the garami in general is a fantastic beginner fish. Now because there's so many different variations and strains and uh, species of gourami you have a ton to pick from. My suggestion would be to look into the dwarf gourami or some of the more smaller sized gouramis like the pearls or opalines or three spots or whatever. Gonna, there's so many different types but they tend to stay under the five inch mark which means they could probably do really well in say a, a, a 30 gallon tank. The dwarfs can probably do a little bit better in a 10 or 20. But you definitely don't want to get a giant red-tailed gourami. Those guys get absolutely monstrous in size, like three feet. I've seen full-grown ones. They are absolute beasts. But they're still a gourami, but definitely not the beginner-type gourami like these pearls. Anyways, that's my preference for the best beginner fish based on a number of factors. I'd love to know what you guys think is the best beginner fish and why it is. Let me know in the comments section below. There are a few other little fish in here we're not talking about in this video, but I can see them now, but when I'm filming, they didn't want to come out, so I decided I'm not even talk to them because it's like they don't even exist in here. But when you got bright lights and you're waving your arms everywhere and cameras rolling, the fish tend to not want to cooperate.